friends myself dr nirmal shah i am working as assistant professor in department of cardiology at un metha institute of cardiology and research center ahmedabad today we will be discussing about the coronary balloon catheters basics and beyond so uh, before going into details of balloon catheter let's quickly have a look on the history of uh, ptca so it was first started in 1929 where dr forsman first did a peripheral uh, heart assessment via peripheral uh, circulatory uh, uh, peripheral angiography in 1964 uh, charles dotter did first peripheral angioplasty and in 1977 uh, the andrus grunting was the first one who did the uh, ptca coronary angioplasty with the balloon catheter so balloon catheter was first used in 1977 and which led to many subsequent advances in the field of intervention cardiology so uh, first it was used just for the poba so there was 40% chances of re narrowing and 10% chance of abrupt closure in 1994 there was a beginning of the stent era but they uh, at that point of time it was just bare metal stent so there was still 20% chances of re stenosis and since 2002 we are in the era of drug eluting stents which has led to the re stenosis chances to less than 10% uh, those who have worked in the cath lab or who have assisted coronary procedures they are must be familiar with classic old balloon catheter so balloon catheter or angioplasty balloon is a small tube uh, which has a balloon mounted at the distal end so angioplasty balloon catheter consists of two integrated parts first is balloon to dilate the lesion and second is a catheter to deliver the balloon to the site of lesion so balloon is inflated and deflated using the inflation device now before uh, discussing the di uh, different types of balloons at the differences one should uh, know the basics of balloon so for any balloon any balloon to be ideal balloon it has basic three clinical needs deliverability crossability and dilatation so deliverability means it must reach to the target crossability means it must pass through the target lesion or stent multiple times if required and dilatation is uh, it must safely open the target lesion we will discuss it one by one first is deliverability so for any balloon uh, uh, for, for ideal deliverability it has two product attributes that pushability and trackability and uh, for the ideal balloon design it should have some design goals like it should be kink resistant it should have one risk to one response either it can be over the wire balloon or rapid exchange and it should be low profile flexible and lubricious so first we will discuss the pushability so what is pushability so it is a transmission of a forward push force from the catheter's proximal end to its distal end so it is influenced by the shaft column length kink resistance and wire compatibility so to maximize the possibility balloon catheter design should be focusing on increase the shaft uh, increasing the shaft column strength increase in kink resistance which is a manufacture uh, process it should have more than one risk to one response and it should have uh, increase wire compatibility over the wire balloon designs provides more possibility compared to rapid exchange so uh, there are basically two type of balloon delivery systems uh, you must be knowing that there are uh, over the wire balloons and rapid exchange balloons so the difference between the two is how much of the guide wire is incorporate into the catheter shafts so the over wire would have a guide wire support throughout the length of a balloon catheter where in the rapid exchange there uh, the, after the short length of the catheter the guide wire comes out so this is the over the wire balloon over the wire delivery system so it provides a continuous guide wire support resulting in a greater pushability as compared to ra rapid exchange this type of system is ideal for more difficult cases where the greater push and wire exchange may be needed so advantages are the continuous guide wire support would be there greater push for the distal anatomy and wire exchange during difficult cases through the lumen is possible the disadvantage is that you will require a uh, longer guide wire like 300 cm uh, guide wire will be necessary second operator uh, usually required and it may be associated with the long process uh, procedure time so specific uses is a treatment of the complex lesion where uh, you require added wire support where easy exchange of wire is uh, required or extra catheter uh, uh, is uh, required or you need to give some intracoronary injections in that case over the wire would be the ideal choice 
So the rapid action delivery system we routinely use during our routine simple coronary procedures, it provides good wire control and quick catheter action. So allowing a single operator technique and this type of system is ideal for simple cases where the extra wire support is not needed. So advantages are it has quick balloon exchange, it requires only a single operator, it has greater operator control of the wire and it has less fluoro and procedural time. But disadvantages uh, are the, inab the uh, inability to exchange the wires without removing the entire system and inability to switch to an over the wire system without exchanging the guide wire and it has a reduced possibility as compared to over the wire balloons. So specific use are cases where the extra support is not required so majority uh, simple type A lesions we usually use rapid action delivery system. After having discussed the deliverability, uh, pushability, uh, let's discuss the trackability. So what is trackability? The ease with which the balloon catheter follows over the guide wire through the coronary anatomy from point A to point B. So it is influenced by friction within the wire lumen or the outer surface, catheter profile and catheter flexibility. So to maximize the trackability, balloon catheter designs should focus on decreasing the profile which is again a manufactured process. It should have increased flexibility which, decide, which is depends on the material which we use and increase the lubricity. So hydrophilic coating decreases the friction and resistance. So after discussing the uh, deliverability, the second most important thing is cross crossability. So uh, second thing Malone must uh, successfully do is to cross the lesion uh, and uh, for that the clean, uh, product attributes are the lesion entry profile, crossing profile, wrap, rewrap and for the same the uh, balloon design goal should be it should have a small tip outer diameter, low profile transition angles, flex angle flexible uh, tip, tight wrap, low profile marker bands and it should have a thin balloon material, tight wrap orientation and tight wrap memory. Let's discuss uh, one by one. So if you have seen the balloon, uh, uh, the, there, uh, the distal most end, the, the lesion entry profile is the distal tip. So the first point at which the balloon catheter comes into contact with the lesion and the crossing profile is the distal bond. So bond is the where the balloon material is bonded to the tip of the catheter and usually one of the largest diameter on the distal. If you see the figure from right hand side, uh, first is the lesion entry profile followed by there is a crossing profile which is which is uh, a distal bond where the balloon is bonded to the distal shaft followed by they have the distal marker radiopaque marker band followed by proximal marker band and proximal bond followed by the proximal shaft. So uh, what is the lesion entry profile? It is the outer diameter and the shape of the catheter's distal tip and is the first point at which the balloon catheter comes into the contact with the lesion. So it is influenced by the tip diameter and flexibility. So to minimize or optimize the lesion entry profile, balloon design should be should focus on decreasing the tip diameter, increasing the tip flexibility and smooth tip taper. Uh, second is the crossing profile. So it is the largest incompressible profile on the distal catheter which must cross the lesion. So it is influenced by the balloon bond and the marker bands. So to minimize or optimize the balloon crossing profile, balloon catheter design should focus on decreasing the balloon profile, decreasing the prof uh, profile marker bands and decreasing the profile distal balloon bond. Wrap. So wrap refers to the tightness of the balloon material that is wrap around the shaft of the balloon delivery system when originally manufactured. So it is influenced by the wrapping technique fold orientation, number of folds as well as the balloon material. So to minimize or optimize the wrap profile, balloon design should focus on increasing the wrap tightness, balloon material and number of the folds. And rewrap. So rewrap refers to the way the balloon returns to the original wrap uh, state after being inflated and deflated. So it is influenced by many factors including the original wrapping technique, orientation and balloon material and memory as well as the inflation pressure and number of repeated inflation. So to minimize or optimize the rewrap profile, balloon catheter design should focus on balloon material and tight original wrap process. After having discussed both uh, uh, deliverability and crossability, let's discuss the dilatation. So final action a balloon must successfully perform is to open the target lesion and for that the product attributes are radial force, positioning, sizing and inflation. And the sample design goal should be high rated burst pressure, low longitudinal and radial growth, distinct shoulders, uh, clearly defined working length, minimal balloon movement, 
कंसिस्टेंट नॉमिनल प्रेशर रिपीटेड कंट्रोल ग्रोथ कंट्रोल ग्रोथ ब्रॉड साइज मैट्रिक्स कंसिस्टेंट इन्फ्लेशन और डिफ्लेशन एंड क्विक डिफ्लेशन एंड प्रिडिक्टेबल बलून बस्ट सो वॉट इज रेडियल फोर्स सो इट इज अ फोर्स एक्सटेड इन अ रेडियल डिरेक्शन ऑन द लीजन एंड वेस्सल वॉल बाई द इन्फ्लेटेड बलून इट इज इन्फ्लुएंस बाई द कॉम्प्लायंस एंड प्रेशर सो टू ऑप्टिमाइज द रेडियल फोर्स बलून डिजाइन शूड फोकस ऑन इंक्रीज रेटेड बस प्रेशर एंड डिक्रीज रॉन्गेट्यूनियल एंड रेडियल ग्रोथ बलून पोजिशनिंग सो इट रिफर्स टू द प्रिसाइज प्लेसमेंट ऑफ इन्फ्लेटेड बलून एट द टारगेट साइड सो एक्यूरेट बलून पोजिशनिंग इज इन्फ्लुएंस बाई इट्स वर्किंग लेंथ बलून शोल्डर एंड बलून मूवमेंट ड्यूरिंग द ड्यूरिंग और आफ्टर इन्फ्लेशन सो टू मैक्सिमाइज द बलून पोजिशनिंग बलून डिजाइन शूड इंक्लूड इंक्रीज विजिबल मार्कर बैंड्स डिस्टिंग बलून शोल्डर्स एंड डिक्रीज बलून मूवमेंट्स सो इफ यू सी द प्रिसाइज बलून पोजिशनिंग एनस्योर द लीजन कवरेज विथ मिनिमल डैमेज टू द एडजस्टेंट हेल्थी टिश्यू सो वॉट इज द वर्किंग लेंथ सो वर्किंग लेंथ इज अ बलून सर्फेस दैट इज इन अ कॉन्टैक्ट विद द टिश्यू वेन इट इज इन्फ्लेटेड सो इट शुड एंड शुड बी डिस्टेंस बिथ्वीन डिस्टल एंड प्रोक्सिमल मार्कर बैंड्स एंड कोन एंगल्स ऑन बलून टैपर्स आर एंगल्स ऑफ द बलून कोन्स एंड लेंथ ऑफ द टैपर्स so steep transition delivers the focal dilatation and minimize the risk of edge dissection you must have heard about the term called watermelon seeding so it is uh, watermelon seeding is a tendency of a balloon to slip within the lesion when inflated so it is more common with the shorter balloons and can be minimized by selective or candy cane coating so in isl lesions scoring or gripping balloons are also minimize uh, also minimize the balloon slipping so it is a operator dependent minimize minimal movement by selecting large uh, longer balloons which may not always be possible based on the lesion uh, being treated and slow inflation hydrophilic or silicone coating on balloon helps to track but may not uh, uh, but may make balloons more prone to slippage so balloon sizing is refers to the length and diameter uh, diameter dimensions of the deployed balloon so accurate balloon sizing is influenced by the nominal pressure balloon growth and size matrix and it is also influenced by operator selecting the correct catheter size and deploy to the correct pressure according to the compliance label so to maximize the balloon sizing balloon should focus on consistent nominal pressure repeatable control growth and increase size matrix so if you see the comp uh, that uh, compliance cha uh, chart behind the package uh, balloon Uh, they always mention the nominal size and nominal pressure so nominal size is stated diameter and length a balloon should reach at a nominal pressure for example uh, of, uh, it has label uh, uh, balloons are typically labeled based on their nominal size so for example if you label is 3 by uh, 3 into 20 balloon is a 3 mm diameter balloon with a working length of 20 mm and nominal pressure is pressure at which the balloon reaches the label diameter so typically uh, nominal pressure for non compliant balloons are 12 atmosphere and for semi compliant balloons it is 8 atmosphere so minimum deviation should exist between the size at a nominal pressure and a label product size regardless of the number of inflations so growth refers to the change in the size either it can radially or longitudinally per atmosphere of pressure applied so it can be of radial growth or longitudinal growth so radial growth is amount the balloon grows radially as the pressure is applied and longitudinal growth is amount the balloon grows longitudinally as pressure is applied so balloon growth may influence the stent elongation during the deployment so uh, balloon sizing and size matrix is dictated by the clinical needs and uh, there are wide range of uh, length available starting from 6 mm to up to 40 mm and diameters available are starting from 1 mm to up to 5 mm so to optimize last is the inflation to optimal function the balloon should have predictable consistent inflation and deflation times at as well as a predictable rated burst pressure so inflation is increasing the balloon pressure and size or volume and typically it refers to the change from the wrap configuration to nominal size and deflation is changing from the nominal configuration to wrap so typically it takes 20 to 30 seconds for full balloon deflation and should be confirmed fluoroscopically by absence of the contrast in the balloon so inflation and deflation is influenced by by balloon volume and pressure and the cross functional area of the deflation lumen larger area will have a faster inflation or deflation 
so having discussed all this uh, let's have a uh, 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 let's have a look at the different terminology we you frequently come across uh, like compliance nominal pressure rated bus pressure working range and dilatation force so what is compliance so compliance is ability of balloon material to increase in size or stretch as the pressure is increased and it is determined by the balloon's diameter growth over a range of the inflation pressure so on basis of compliance there are three types of balloons available high and moderate compliant balloon semi compliant balloon and non compliant balloons let's discuss one by one so high and moderate compliance balloons they are made up of the polyolefin copolymer or polyethylene so uh, balloon size balloon sizing is important sometimes oversizing can easily occur with the high compliant balloons so they not tend not only to stretch in the diameter but also to over expand into areas with the least resistance so like proximal and distal lesion so can lead to dog burning effect and dissections are more common with uh, high and high compliant balloons so semi compliant balloons so primary use of semi compliant balloons are pre dilatation of stenotic portion of coronary artery so 80% of pci procedures use the semi compliant balloons for poba for pre dilatation so pre dilatation lead to accurate size uh, to uh, accurately size lesions and allows for the better access to the lesion and whenever there is unable to direct the stent you can always use the semi compliant balloon so features of the semi compliant balloons are it has a softer material so better trackability and which is great for the difficult to uh, reach the lesions it expands in the size and pressure is increased it provides the sizing flexibility so there is 8 to 10% of growth rate it offers good rev wrap so helpful when multiple inflation uh, are required the nominal uh, uh, pressure for semi compliant balloon is 6 to 8 atmosphere with dated bus pressure of 12 to 14 atmosphere so working range of 6 to 12 atmosphere for smaller balloons and working range for uh, workers larger workers balloon is 8 8 to 14 atmosphere so uh, features of some compliant and semi compliant balloons they have better flexibility and trackability they have better cross and recross performance they have limited durability increased diameter and longitudinal growth variation and limited dilatation force now let's discuss the non compliant balloon so one of the major use for the non complex balloon is a post dilatation of delivered stent so 20% of pci procedure use a non compliant uh, balloon for uh, where there is a calcified lesion to crack the calcium so, and for uh, also for the post dilatation it has a minimum longitudinal growth so it is a key to avoid the dilatation outside the stented area and now in present era where we routinely use the drug eluting stents so use of non compliant balloon has increased uh, so there are uh, uh, in very we are using the drug uh, eluting uh, stents so there are always chances of mal opposition of stent set and age effects restenosis so to prevent that the non compliant balloons are uh, recommended features of non compliant balloons are they are stiffer they are more durable material so they can withstand and deliver at the high pressure so it's great for the uh, uh, tough uh, and for the uh, to tough lesions and to crack the calcium so less trackable through vasculature it has minimal size uh, expansion and the pressure is increased so it's ideal for focus dilatation it has just 4 to 6% growth rate as compared to the semi compliant balloon uh, who uh, they, which have uh, a 6 to 8% of growth rate and typically offers uh, poor pre wrap so nominal pressure is 10 to 12 uh, atmosphere and rated bus pressure is 18 to 20 mm which is ideal for the post dilatation so non compliant balloons they are made up of the polyethylene tetraphthalate they have thicker wall balloon they are thicker wall balloon allo uh, work at the higher pressure a yeah, hard calcified lesion and post stent dilatation they are ideal uh, choice of balloons so this is a very important chart if you uh, see the co compliance comparison between non compliant semi compliant compliant balloon uh, if you see that as the atmospheric pressure increases the diameter in, uh, grow increases is more common with semi compliant and compliant balloon as compared to non compliant balloon so other important uh, difference between semi compliant and uh, non compliant balloon is dog bone effects so as we just discussed the compliance is the ability of a balloon to grow with the pressure so semi compliant balloons grow and conform to the areas of the least resistance as pressure is increased 
so semi compliant balloon actually grows more where it is not constricted so thus having a high potential for causing the edge dissection so as the pressure is increases the uh, size increases as against that non compliant balloon grow and conform less as pressure is increased so little change in the volume with the incremental increase in the pressure more force is exerted against the lesion at a given inflation pressure than the semi compliant balloon including the stand delivery balloons so as pressure increases the rigidity increases not the size so this is the uh, again this is the dog boning effect so compliant balloon tend to be oversized with the edges with the de less dilatation as the obstructive segment of the lesion which is look which looks like a dog bone so it is known as a dog boning effect uh, and a non compliant balloon gives a predictable amount of pressure at the lesion without any uncontrolled radial and longitudinal growth so it's a same chart comparing the semi compliant and non compliant balloon so semi compliant balloon has 8 to 10% of growth within the working range when inflated as long as then the non compliant balloon has 4 to 6% of growth range so if you see the chart on right hand side uh, 3 mm balloon uh, if you compare between semi compliant non compliant at the atmospheric pressure of 7 the semi compliant balloon has a diameter reach 2.94 and non compliant balloon has 2.8 as against that at higher pressure like th at 13 atmosphere the semi compliant balloon gives a diameter of 3.23 as compared to non compliant balloon where its size is 3.07 and even at the pressure of 17 atmosphere non compliant balloon will still have a size diameter of 3.17 which is still less than the semi compliant balloon so in summary if you compare the use of semi compliant and non compliant balloons so semi compliant balloons are used more for the poba of non calcified lesion pre dilatation of non calcified lesion whereas there is a tight lesion where the entry is uh, entry is difficult in those case semi compliant balloon is prefer and where there is a very highly calcified lesion for the poba and pre dilatation of a calcified lesion as well as post dilatation uh, for after stand deployment we use the non compliant balloons so let's discuss some basic terms like nominal pressure so what is nominal pressure so it's the amount of pressure in the atmosphere required to inflate the balloon to its level diameter if you see the compliance chart uh, which is given in back side of the packet of uh, balloons they always mention the nominal pressure and rated burst pressure so if for example in this case the 3 mm balloon with a nominal pressure of 6 so uh, it should reach at 3 mm diameter when the 6 atmosphere of pressure is applied what is the rated burst pressure so the pressure level a balloon is designed to accept without the rupture as in this case it is a 14 mm so balloon with rb p of 14 is designed to accept the 14 atmosphere of pressure without failure so rated burst pressure is the maximum pressure to which the balloon is designed to be inflated so 95% confidence is that the 99.90% balloons will not fail at or below the rated burst pressure and the third term is the working range it is a uh, inflation range between the nominal and rated burst pressure so typically for semi compliant balloon it is 8 to 14 mm and for non compliant balloon it is 10 to 20 atmosphere so uh, again the, as we, we just discussed the working range is the inflation range between the nominal and rated burst pressure last one is the dilatation force so dilatation force is the radial force exerted by the balloon on the coronary lesion or metal stand so dilatation force is the function of a inflation pressure and balloon material so these are just uh, uh, to have some idea about the different balloons available in the market we won't be going into details of, for all of them so many workhorse balloons the semi compliant balloons are available and majority are from the matronic boston abbott etc so these are again the sum of my semi compliant balloon you can see the mini track uh, these are the crossing balloons mini track where the lesser diameter tight uh, is needed for the tight lesion uh, uh this is the non compliant balloons like uh, quantum apex nc track which uh, which we you routinely use so see these are the different balloons so having discussed the basics of balloon let's have some uh, discussion on pre dilatation and post dilatation procedures so what is the pre dilatation procedure so pre dilatation is the use of a balloon prior to the implantation of the stent uh gaining the access to the lesion or to determine the attributes of the lesion to add in the stent selection 
So lesion is first crossed with the balloon. The balloon is inflated to dilate the and size the lesion, and the lesion is uh, open through to allow the passage of the stent delivery system. So what is the rationale for pre dilatation? So uh, it is uh, uh, it is necessary to determine the lesion length and diameter. So what side stent you want to use? You don't want to miss a part of the lesion with a stent that is too short, or you don't want to under or over expand the stent to reach the appropriate size. So then to determine the lesion morphology, is the lesion is dilatable? So sometimes lesion are so tight, calcified, which we won't allow the stent delivery system. So before taking the stent, one must dilate the lesion with the balloon. So pre dilatation is recommended in the drug eluting stents. So when it is appropriate, so pre dilatation is appropriate in any complex lesion where the passage and deployment of stent may be challenging, like heavily calcified lesion. CTO lesions, angulated lesions, type B2 and C lesions, and bifurcation lesions. So, potential limitation for pre dilatation is it can lead to dissection. So, sometimes you may require another stent or drug therapy or CABG for more severe cases. It also increases the procedure time, fluoro time, and contrast use. And it also increases the procedure cost and operational insufficiency. Sometimes it can lead to, in in it can increase the intimal damage. So post dilatation. So post dilatation ensures the full stent expansion and apposition to the vessel wall. So with the introduction of drug eluting stent, post dilatation ensures the stent is fully opposed, allowing the drug to be in contact with the artery wall. So after the stent is deployed, a non-compliant balloon, balloon is delivered to the stent sites. The balloon is inflated, applying the high pressure to the stent. So pressing it firmly into the vessel wall and inflation time depends on the balloon volume. The balloon is deflated and withdrawn, leaving the well opposed stent in place. So post dilatation rational, what is the rational behind the post dilatation? So after the uh, this uh, uh, dash use, the studies have shown that the stent under expansion is common in initial stent deployment. Uh, after uh, in initial stent deployment, and there are strong predictors for the stent thrombosis and target vessel revascularization. So inadequate stent expansion results in abnormal CS stress that might be associated, associated with the stent thrombosis. So semi-compliant balloon material used in a stent delivery system may not be adequate to achieve the full stent expansion in segments with the heavy plaque burden and increased resistance. So post dilatation, which balloon should be used, semi-compliant or non-compliant? So non-compliant balloons are more suitable for post dilatation as compared to semi-compliant balloon. Reason being, the semi-compliant balloon continue to grow with the added pressure which can lead to over-expanded stents. It also conforms to the lesion allowing an unevenly deployed stent and may grow outside the stent length, so damaging the healthy tissue creating the age effect risk stenosis. As compared to the non-compliant balloons offer the best opportunity for good stent and vessel apposition due to high pressure and less compliance. So they are recommended for the post dilatation. So again post dilatation also has some risk involved like again it increases the procedure cost and operational uh, inefficiency. It can also lead to edge dissection and perforation where you will require another stents or CABG if there is a severe. Uh, also it leads to the longitudinal stent deformation. Some stents have been prone to uh, cause LSD when recross. It also increases the intimal damage and uh, last and important is the distal embolization. So stent malopposition, the contributing factors uh, are the low pressure stent deployment, long lesion requiring the multiple stents, lesion with many calcification, heavy calcification, treatment of a diffuse instant risk stenosis, lesion with the severe stenosis and bifurcation lesion. So having discussed uh, semi-compliant, compliant balloons, their differences and their uh, uh, use, let's discuss some other coronary balloons. You must have heard about the uh, open balloon, debulking devices like cutting balloons, scoring balloon, IVL devices and drug eluting balloons which are now in practice. So it, it, uh, drug eluting balloons are itself is a different topic, so we won't be discussing depth today. We will be discussing the other balloons. First is the OPN NC balloon. So it is the only commercial available, commercially available NC balloon with compliance up to 35 atmosphere. And it is from the uh, CIS Medical Switzerland. So it is a rapid exchange catheter compatible with 
वन फोर वायर इट इज द मोस्ट डिस्टिंगटिव फीचर ऑफ द ओपन बलून इज द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द प्रोपरेटरी ट्विन लेयर बलून टेक्नोलॉजी विच परमिट्स द यूज ऑफ वेरी हाई प्रेशर इन्फ्लेशन एंड इट एन्श्योर्स द यूनिफॉर्म एक्सपेंसन ओवर वाइड रेंज ऑफ प्रेशर सो हाईली नॉन कॉम्प्लाइंट विथ अ नॉमिनल प्रेशर ऑफ टेन एटमोसफियर एंड रिटेड बस प्रेशर ऑफ थर्टी फाइव एटमोसफियर एंड ईच बलून इज फैक्टरी टेस्टेड एट फोर्टी फाइव एटमोसफियरिक प्रेशर सो करेंटली अवेलेबल डायमीटर्स आर फ्रॉम वन पॉइंट फाइव एम एम अप टू फोर एम एम विथ पॉइंट फाइव एम एम ऑफ इंटरवल्स एंड लेंथ्स अवेलेबल आर टेन फिफ्टीन एंड ट्वेंटी एम एम सो कॉमर्शियल नेम ऑफ ओ पी एन बलून कम्स फ्रॉम द एब्रीवेशन ऑफ ओपन ओ पी ई एन वेर ई इज साइलेंट If you see the uh, this chart on the left side, they have compared open balloon with other NC balloons, and you can see the red line uh, is indicator of the open balloon, which has a compliance of up to 35 atmospheric pressure, where majority other balloons has compliance of uh, around uh, 20 to 22 atmospheric pressure. So open balloon has a uh, design with the lowest and uh, lesion entry profile, has tapered balloon shape. has the lowest balloon profile has hydrophilic coating as a mar single marker and it has unique hub design for better grip second is a cutting balloon uh, cutting balloon the flexstrom cutting balloon uh, is a older addition from the boston so basically in cutting balloon it is made up of the three or four micro surgical blades uh, depends on the balloon size like for balloon size of 2 to 3.25 mm the, there would be three blades and for larger balloon will larger balloons will have a, a four blades so blades are mount, uh, mounted longitudinally on a nc balloon so balloon material wraps around the blades and prevents them from being imposed to the vessel wall during the device delivery so it is available in diameter ranging from 2 to 4 mm in 0.25 mm increments and lengths of 6 10 and 15 mm so mechanism of action is it creates the longitudinal incision plaque that allows the control dilatation at lower lower pressure with less vessel wall injury so newer addition in the cutting balloon is a wolverine balloon which we routinely use it is also from the boston scientific so advantages are it has less bulky and more flexibility with improved tip profile and they have flex points at 5 mm intervals in balloons of 10 and 15 mm lengths and this modification enhances the deliverability in complex lesions so tips and tricks while using the cutting balloons are uh, you should use 6 french or bigger guide with optimal backup support there should be supportive guide wire a balloon artery ratio should not be exceeding one, uh, more than 1.1 to 1 shorter length of the tortuous vessel uh, slow inflation and deflation one m atmospheric every 5 seconds angiography before each inflation and avoid talking catheters be, uh, between the inflations second one is the scoring balloon so angioscal ptc scoring balloon which is available so basically it is consist of three rectangular spiral nitinol scoring elements wrapped on uh, semi compliant balloon in a folded position balloon covers scoring elements from vessel wall so uh, it is available in diameter ranging from 2 mm to 5 mm and length of 10 15 and 20 mm so it has large working range from 2 to 18 atmosphere and it has smaller crossing profile of 2.7 uh, french and enhance flexibility facilitate the delivery ability of the catheter in tortuous anatomies so mechanism of of action of scoring balloon is during the dilatation scoring elements lock the device in place and prevent the watermelon seeding so dilatation force is concentrated over the small area of the scoring element and exerts a force which is equal to 15 to 25 times that times that of the conventional balloon so larger luminal expansion with limited vessel wall injury uh, the complication with cutting balloon and scoring balloon sir it has a potential complications are like coronary spasm dissection perforation and entrapment so spasm is common with the cutting balloon and it responds well to intracoronary nitrates dissection occurs in about 10% but most of them are minor and non flow limiting dissection perforation are rare and occur more commonly when you have oversized the balloons and device entrapment is a serious complication with this device that occur uh, occurs during treatment of the isr when the wire passes through the unopposed strand struts last one is the ivl device is it intravascular lithotripsy so it is a rapid exchange balloon catheter with lithotripsy emitters so there is a system console which provides the electrical energy for the creation of the ultrasonic waves 
So they are available in sizes between 2.5 mm to 4 mm diameter at the fixed 12 mm of length. So catheter is prepared with 1 rest to 1 saline contrast mixture. An appropriate size balloon is positioned across the calcified lesion and inflated to 4 atmosphere to create a position with the vessel wall that facilitates the transmission of shocks. So system delivers cycles of 10 pulses in sequence at a rate of 1 pulse per second. And after each cycle, balloon is inflated to 6 atmosphere to assess the lesion modification and process is repeated until the desired results have achieved. So catheter provides maximum of 18 pul 80 pulses and mechanism of action is the shocks cause the vaporization of fluid inside the balloon generating rapid expanding and collapsing bubbles that produce the sonic pressure waves that generates the positive pressure peak of 50 atmosphere and which selectively fractures the calcium with minimum effect on the fibroelastic component of vessel wall. So thank you.